Good morning and welcome to San Diego People. I'm Alan Denton. What are Regis Philbin, Dennis Hopper, Marion Ross, Raquel Welch, and shotgun Tom Kelly all have in common? Well, they're all from San Diego and they all have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. San Diego radio legend shotgun Tom Kelly just received his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and his friend Stevie Wonder made the presentation. Let's take a look. My life's goal has been to be a DJ. Truly it is my joy to, to have come today to say some good things about you, Tom Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> shotgun Tom Kelly. We listen to you on the radio. I also would like to thank Johnny Kay, the smartest man in radio, who is proving it by getting out of radio. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, I remember uh, my kids telling me as we walked down Hollywood Boulevard, you know, Dad, someday you're going to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I thought they were crazy. But God bless them. You know, that conversation took place just last week. Uh, I hope it will remind you of good times, the magic of radio, the music that has become so much a part of our lives, and me. When you walk over my star, please curb your dog. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Shotgun Tom Kelly. Yeah. Shotgun Tom Kelly, Hollywood Walk of Fame, K Earth 101. Wow, what a thrill that must have been. I, hey, great to have you in the studio. Good to be here, Alan. Good to meet you. I listen to you every afternoon on K Earth on your afternoon drive show. I appreciate that. Out of that. LA. Yep. Man, you do some rocking and some good oldies. Having a good time, man. I know you are. <laughs> Let's talk the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What was that like? That had to have been the thrill of your life. It, it, it was. I mean, you know, uh, you get movie stars, you get people, recording artists, uh, Oscar winners, Oscar nominees, uh -huh. who get stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But to give it to a radio guy, Alan, is just, I mean, that is something yeah. else. So I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored to receive that star. You're right there with so many other people, countless actors and other radio DJs have their That's own right. star, right? I'm some, right. some of your heroes, right? Well, one of my heroes uh, is the real Don Steele. Right. And uh, we're, we're right next to him. Yeah. So it's a real Don Steele and Shotgun Tom Kelly at the corner of La Brea and Hollywood uh, Boulevard. Love to have everybody but come down and take a look at yeah. it now. You know? Oh, that's, that, that is just so great. Uh, Stevie Wonder, we saw a clip yes. of Stevie Wonder. Mm. Tell me the story about that. How did you come to know Stevie Wonder? Well, you know, he comes into the station, we do interviews with him, mm. and uh, I told him the story of my daughter, Melanie, uh, who's a registered nurse here in town and, uh, and works at the same hospital where she was born, working with the same doctor who delivered her. Yeah. And I said, when she was, uh, when she was born, I told Stevie, I said, I played your song, Isn't She Lovely? Mm -hmm. And she's graduating from the San Diego State University. And could you record a little audio for her? And he said, sure. So his brother Milton uh, and uh, Stevie went back to his recording studio. And they recorded this little thing. And I'll recite it for you right now. Uh, it, was, uh, it was at her graduation. And I, and I, I cued the audio guy. And I, well, first of all, I said, ladies and gentlemen, when my daughter Melanie was born, <laughs> I played Stevie Wonder's Isn't She Lovely to uh -huh. celebrate her birth. And so, t as she graduates from San Diego State, I think it'd be only apropos that we play Stevie Wonder's Isn't sure, She Lovely. Exactly. So I cue the audio guy, and out of the speaker comes Stevie's voice. Hi, Melanie, this is Stevie. Oh, On behalf good. of your father, I want to congratulate you from graduating from the San Diego State School of Nursing. What can I say? Uh -huh. One, two, one, isn't she lovely? Oh, and he man. sang it. And I can't sing it or I'd... I'd that had to have been a thrill for her, too. And for you. Oh, it was. It was. Yeah. And so from that point on, Stevie and I became friends. And uh, so when I was getting my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I asked Stevie, I said, uh, uh, if you got some time, I'd love to have you do it. I remember he called me at, at the house, and it was late at night. Well, 9.30, I guess. And he goes, uh, hey, shotgun, this is Stevie. And I said, hey, man, I'm getting my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I want you to be one of my speakers. What are you doing on uh, April 30th? Are mm -hmm. you going to be on tour or anything? Oh, I think we're okay. So anyway, my people called his people and put it together. And it all worked out. It did. Wow. Yeah. How has life changed for you since getting that star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? God, people are really treating me really nice. <laughs> I mean, you're getting all kinds of calls. 
I Am mean, I getting what now? Alan? All kinds of calls and all kinds oh, of oh, yeah, all offers. Congratulatory. And, I mean, I'm getting letters and and uh, people could go on my uh, website, uh, yeah. shotguntomkelly.com, uh, uh-huh. and see all the uh, coverage and and things about that. It's it was just a marvel. It was it, it was a really historic day for radio and a marvelous day for me and my family. I had family members flying in from out of town and, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it was just wonderful. And they got mm-hmm. their picture taken there at the star, you know. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a richly rewarding experience. One of the highlights of your life, no doubt. Oh yeah, one that I will never ever yeah. forget. Yeah. And the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, they were so nice. Anna Martinez-Holler, who's the star girl, uh, and uh, she arranges for that, that whole ceremony. And uh, uh, Leron Gubler, who's the president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, he's the MC. He took over for Johnny Grant, mm-hmm. who was the honorary right. mayor of Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, Johnny did it for so, so many years. And uh, so we always acknowledge Johnny Grant at every one of those uh, star celebrations. Mm-hmm. And, and Leron did, and, and I also mm-hmm. did too. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit of radio history. Sure. K Earth 101 actually kind of evolved from, from what was then KHJ, right? Tell right. Me, 93 tell me the story. KHJ was uh, back in the 60s. You know, AM radio was the big deal. Oh, yeah. Back in the Exactly. Days. So. Uh, 93 KHJ, Boss Radio, 93 KHJ, you know. And they used to have some really heavy hitters, Robert W. Morgan in the morning, right. the real Don Steele yeah, in exactly. the afternoon, yeah. uh, and, uh, and uh, Johnny Williams all night long. I mean, uh, that, it was just a you know, humble harve, and uh, so many, and Charlie Tuna, Charlie, who I worked and with. And Charlie Tuna is still on. Yeah, right? well, we worked together at K-Earth 101 yeah. in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really, really a great radio station. And they had this little teeny FM thing going. Uh-huh. You know, they didn't think FM was going to be really right. big. Well, at the time, a lot of stations on FM were 100,000-watt big band. You know, that, that That's was right, back Alan. in they the early, early days. Background music. Yeah, background. You know. And then all of a sudden, they got wise to it, didn't oh, they? Oh, yeah. Well, I started on an FM station here yeah. in 1966, uh-huh. uh, KPRI, playing Frank Sinatra and Sergio Mendez in the Brazil 66, I remember. But anyway, yeah. back to KHJ. Uh, yeah, they had this little FM thing going, so it was, they, they would simulcast uh-huh. uh, KHJ, AM, and FM. They didn't know what to do with this FM thing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, later on in years, they said, well, a lot of people are getting FMs in their car, so why don't we develop a format? So we'll call it uh, K-Earth, yeah. from the Earth, you know. Sure. You know, so, and they were playing oldies on, they played the current stuff on AM, the big uh-huh. station, and then play oldies on the FM station. Well, K-Earth really took off. Yeah. And then, of course, the decline of music on AM uh, kind of declined, and then, of course, FM was up. And, of course, they were making more money yeah. doing the uh, music on Everything the FM. Everything kind of shifted over to yeah, FM. Did. Yeah, And then uh, yeah. K-Earth became a huge, yeah. huge station, 51,000 watts. Their tower is on the tippy-top of uh, KHJ-TV at that time, uh-huh. uh, which is KCAL 9 now. Yeah. But it's uh, 51,000 watts on top of Mount Wilson, and it just covers the entire so, yeah, that's what Southern I California area. Yeah, you can put a you can signal, pick it up oh, down. yeah, easy. Yeah. Pick it up like here I say, in San I'm Diego. I'm listening in on my way into work every afternoon sure. to your show. Yeah. yeah. And I do appreciate that, man. I tell you <laughs> what, you, you play some great music, and I, I, you got that high energy, and that's what I remember about radio. Well, that's that's my content. Yeah. You know, a lot of people tell stories about song history facts. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll I'll just uh, you know, people drive in in a traffic jam. They've heard talk radio and stuff all day long, uh-huh. and when they when they tune in to me, they're going to hear a lot of fun. A lot of regular listeners. See, my fans mean so much to me. When they come up to me and they say, you know what, you make me happy on my drive home. Yeah. You know, when you, uh, hey, I hope you keep it out of trouble in your automobile bubble. You better believe it, baby. Here's Marvin Gaye on K Earth 101, you know, and the incredible Stevie Wonder and that's, on that, K Earth 101. That's the yeah. famous shotgun Tom Kelly voice right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to get into, we're going to take a break. I want to get into okay. how, how your career started. Sure. I want to get into the kids' club, KUSI. Yeah, I used we to got a, KUSI, lot of, yeah. a lot of things we want to talk about. Absolutely. Today. Okay. All right. Coming up next, we're going to look at the career of shotgun Tom Kelly including his days right here at KUSI. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the entertainment capital of the world, Shotgun Tom Kelly. KF 101, Los Angeles. 
101 with Shotgun Tom Killing, and I'm telling you right now, you know my theory on the whole thing. You can't go wrong when you play the Stones, and I got it right now for you right here with that Honky Tonk Lady Blues on Oldies Radio, K-Earth 101. I met a gin so far queen Shotgun Tom Kelly. Yo, baby. K-Earth 101. Well, good afternoon. It's 4 o'clock. And that, my friends, is radio at its best. For the last four decades, Shotgun Tom Kelly has been one of the top radio personalities in the country. He also helped launch KUSI Television as the host of the KUSI Kids Club. So watch this. Oh, he's real happy about the KUSI Kids Club. And so will you be right here on KUSI TV 51 San Diego. <laughs> Keep watching every morning and afternoon for your chance to meet Baby Shamu in person and find out more about our newest member of the KUSI Kids Club right here at SeaWorld. Right, Clyde? <laughs> All right, Shotgun, how did, how did Mike McKinnon rope you into that one? Well, I was the booth announcer at KUSI. Okay. And, uh, you know, about a year after, uh, you know, I was uh, doing the booth and making the announcements on, on, on the television station. Uh, we were, by the way, the, at, there were no news on Kia was right. on, and it was just basically, yeah. uh, you know, threes comedy syndicated uh, sitcoms and things like that, and movies, late night movies and sure. stuff. So uh, Mike came up to me in the hall and says, "Hey, you know, uh, Shotgun, uh, <laughs> we're thinking about uh, you know doing a uh, kids uh, mm-hmm. thing." Uh, uh, we want to call it the KUSI Kids Club. You got any interest in being the host? I said, love to. And, yeah. and, and so that's the way it started. And I yeah. really uh, got to thank Mike because we did that for 12 years. 12 years. That was a good long run. It was. It and really I still was. get grown adults coming up to me and say, you know I what? Started I started to say, yeah. When, when, I, when I come home from school, I used to watch right. you on the KUSI Kids Club. Mm-hmm. We did a lot of on location stuff like you saw SeaWorld, San Diego Zoo, mm-hmm. uh, Balboa Park, and things like that. But we did ha- do some stuff in studio. Sure. Uh, Mike built a, a set for us. And it had KUSI kids going. We had kids in the studio, and we'd have people from Disney come down yeah. and plug uh, their uh, different yeah. movies and things like and, that. And you told me earlier, we were talking about before we went on the air, that, that kids would call in on, on another show you did, too. Well, actually, it was the KUSI Kids Club. Okay. That's how it started. That's how it started. They it call started, okay. we, we had a bunch of toys in the, in, yeah. you know, behind me. And uh, the, we'd break from the cartoon, and uh-huh. I'd come back. Hey, kids, this is Shotgun Tom Kelly right here on the KUSI Kids Club. Would you like one of these toys? Well, we call number 51 right now. Okay, and then I'd answer the, I'd start answering uh-huh. the phone. Hey, you're calling number one. Call back, try again. Hey, you're calling number two. Call back, try again. Call number three, you know. And then we'd break for a commercial, uh-huh. a couple of commercials. Then I'd be back. Yeah. Hey, you're calling number 49. Hey, you're calling number uh, 50. You're calling number 51. Who is this? Hey, can I talk to your mother? Okay. Hey, Mom, can I put your son on the air? <laughs> Okay, great. Hey, Jeremy, which one of these toys would you like? And he'd pick out the G.I. Joe. I said, oh, you got the G.I. Joe, no problem. Okay, Jeremy, you're a winner right here on the KUSI Kids Club with Shotgun like you, Tom. You Kelly. had to go around the world to get the toy to the well, kid, yes. right? Well, yes. Well, you have to ask permission uh, exactly. to put the, the child exactly. on the air. And so we'll be back with more of the KUSI yeah. Kids Club, but now we'll get back to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was the... Uh, my... Sounded like it was a lot of fun. It was. It was live television, uh-huh. and I was yeah. the only host Yeah. Uh, for right. the for KUSI in right. those days, you know, yeah. so it was, that was nice. some good times. Yeah, yeah. It was Speaking great. of good times, let's go back to the beginning. Okay. How your career started? What what was it? The motivating factor that said, "Hey, this is what I want to do." I'm listening to these guys that are doing this stuff, and well, this is what was, I want to do. I, actually, I was 10 years old. I came home from school. I went to St. John of the Cross Catholic School on yeah. Lemon Grove. Yeah, and I came home from school, and my mother, uh, uh, Levon. Uh, said, uh, you know, Tommy, there's a man broadcasting in Lemon Grove, and he's putting people on the air. Mm-hmm. You ought to go down there and see if you get on the radio. And I said, okay, Mom. So I pedaled my bike down. Then there was a guy by the name of Frank Thompson on Kogo Radio. Right. He was broadcasting a in a trailer. legendary San Diego radio station. And still is, still yeah. is. But he was broadcasting in a trailer, and uh, Frank Thompson had these horn rimmed glasses on, and... Uh, 
and I saw two turntables, uh, actually record players I, in those yeah. days, I called yeah. them, and a microphone. And uh, he says, uh, yeah, this is Frank Thompson on KOGO. We have a young man standing out here. Come on in, young man. What's your name? <laughs> oh, my name is Tom. <laughs> well, Tom, I've got a prize for you. I've got four passes for you to see the L.A. T-Birds when they come to town. Here they are, mm -hmm. and they're going to be at the Westgate Park, which was the old ball sure. park in those days, right. which is Fashion Valley today. Right. But anyway, I'm so thrilled. I, he put me on the air, interviewed me, uh, and uh, gave me these tickets, and I watched him. And then I went home to my bedroom and built a mock radio station. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then later on, uh, when I was about 13, I used to hang around radio stations. Mm -hmm. And Sonny Jim Price at a station called KDEO out in El Cajon. Uh, <laughs> it was of the, uh, another rock and roll mm -hmm. There was KGB, there was uh, KCBQ, and there was KDEO. Now, were these daytimers or 24-hour stations? 24-hour 24 stations. 24 hours. But that was a big deal. Three rock stations yeah. in San Diego. Wow. And they're all competing. Uh -huh. And so uh, Sonny Jim Price was the program director yeah. of KDEO. And he brought me in. He wanted a teenager's opinion on a record that he was going to add. He was going to get it on before any radio station in the country, before KHJ, you know, any sure. of them. So, but it was a gamble. So he got this new group on, and he says, I really like it, but I need a teenager's opinion. What do you think of this song? And he put it on. I listened to it. And I said, well, you know, Jim, I really like that song. And you know what it was? Oh. It was Mamas and the Papas, wow. California Dreamin'. California Dreamin'. And he went on it first. Then KHJ went on it. Of course, Was, was that then their, their, their start? California Dream. Uh, yes, and Monday, uh, yeah, California Dream. Monday, Monday, and, and California uh, Dream. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and the, some of their big hits. Yeah, yeah. but G Jim was a very influential. Wow. Yeah. And, and then he said, "Hey, how would you like a job?" Yeah. I said, "I'd love it." You know, inside the radio station. You know, uh, working in the news department. Yeah. You know, uh, and going for this, and and so he said, "Yeah, why don't you?" Uh, Go to so, work for so us. So they put you on the air? After a dollar. No, no, they didn't put me on the air at that time. Okay. I was just behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. But I was, saw, I was in the radio station. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I saw all these guys sure. that uh, you know were on the air, and I, I had a rapport with them, and I was making $1.25 an hour, <laughs> Alan. Uh, yeah, the but, big, big but, doll. But if you're like most of us, you'd work for nothing just to get in, right? You know you would. At that you know, time. Yes. You know, that, you know, that's called paying your dues. It's Exactly. Yeah. You know, you were in radio. Exactly. I mean, you know. And it was the same thing. A sure. dollar, quarter, an hour. You know, sure. and, you know, you collect the Coke bottles, sweep the floor, you know, do whatever. And, and then maybe you'd get to give the time, the temperature, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then I'd get to uh, practice in the yeah. production room and yeah. uh, make tapes for my little right. radio station. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that had to have been a blast. It was. It was so, great. So you worked San Diego's home. You worked mostly in San Diego mostly radio San stations. Mostly San Diego, yeah. Starting out. Yeah. Yeah. K, uh, KCBQ was... Well, I was came the, later on. Now, here's, here's what happened. From KDEO, I met this guy who was on the air. He was program director, uh, George Manning, yeah. of KPRI, which was kind of a jazz station. And they played Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. And I remember it was 1966, uh, Sergio Mendez in the Brazil 66. And he said, how would you like to come and uh, be on the air on the weekends? And I'd say, I'd love it. So I, I played that, and that was my first kid show, uh -huh. kids radio show. I did a six hour show wow. on, on, on the Sunday morning, and uh, it was the Uncle Tommy show, Uncle you know, Tommy. Uh, wow. brought to you by George's Wonderful World of Cakes. Uh -huh. And we'd play kids stuff. So, <laughs> so I started out doing a kids radio show, and then after that, that was one hour, then we'd play jazz for the rest of the time. Yeah. So that was my first on the air job. Let me ask you this, as you, as you evolved in radio, who did you listen to? And, and I mean, every big time disc jockey or jock as we used sure. to call them, had their own style that really catapulted them to the top. Yes. And you kind of listened to others and you, and you took this and that and you developed your style. Who, was, who were your heroes and how did you come about with your high energy, with the type of voice and the type of, you know, the, the the feel that you have that you come across with the, with the listeners. Well, I had a lot of a uh, lot of people that I really loved to listen to on the radio. One of which was uh, Wolfman Jack. Yeah, Wolfman. Sure. I mean, he was on this big uh, fifty thousand, no, one hundred and fifty thousand. Was it XERF or something down yeah, in Del Rio, over, Rio, over in Texas, Del Rio, Texas? Texas yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, XERF. This yeah. is Wolfman right. Jack, man. And, yeah. and you know, he. Uh, so I listened to him, and uh, uh, and then of course the real Don Steele. Yeah. At 93 KHJ, so these were these were my two big heroes. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and 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 Wolfman, you ran into Wolfman later, right? Well, I, you know, here's how it happened. You know, I I become I'm a fan. Uh huh. 
then I become a friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was a big fan of Wolfman's, and uh, then we got to be friends because I was in the business. I was working at KCBQ, uh -huh. and he knew of my history, and I was blown away. So we just got together. I remember uh, he was doing a show. Uh, uh, I was at KACY in Ventura. And he was coming through with the Wolfman Jack uh, show, uh -huh. you know, with singers sure. on stage. Yeah. And so I interviewed him on the air, and he says, "Hey, man, why don't you come on down and uh, uh, play some pool with us down there?" Uh, you know, I said, "When you," get, I said, "Well, I'm on the air." That's okay, man. Come on down. And in fact, you can um, you can hear that sure. air check yeah. on uh, ShotgunTomKelly.com. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, uh, I said, "Okay, so I, that's." That was my first meeting, and we, uh -huh. we just hit it off. How about and that? And I, you know, I told him that I used to order this album when he first started out. You know, uh, Wolfman Jack sings rock and roll songs. Okay. He goes, "Oh man, you, that's a terrible album, man. Oh, it's awful, man. You don't want to play that." You know, he warned me about that. So I remember when he later on, as we became yeah. friends, uh, and he used to come to town and, yeah. and be on the on, on different talk shows, and I I give them this. To the producer, and they use that for bump music. Is that right? And um, he was on uh, the Stacy Taylor show, I remember. And uh, say, hey, we got Wolfman Jack here, and they uh -huh. played that bump. He's, oh my goodness gracious, that's terrible. Where'd you get that music? <laughs> oh man, I know where you got it. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> You know. <laughs> that anyway. is a great story, and I know you've got so many more, and we won't talk about the hat because okay. you never go anywhere without it. We're no, gonna take I'm going to be right here, Alan. All right. We're I'm with take, you. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come <laughs> back. I, I'm loving this. Tell the hat on San Diego people something you didn't know about Shotgun Tom Kelly. Plus, we're going to talk about that hat, as I said. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Some bucks from the calendar girl right here on K Earth 101. Well, today we are celebrating the new star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Shotgun Tom Kelly. Everyone knows about, of course, your legendary career, Shotgun. We got just a few minutes left. Tell me about the hat okay. and how you got the name Shotgun. Okay. Well, first of all, how do you like this uh, suit? I love it. Yeah, it's I, great. You know, this was uh, uh, given to me by Jerry Klein and Janet Klein uh -huh. out of a better deal. Uh, tuxedo and, and in fact, they, when when you guys do right. telethons, exactly, they, you get your clothing that's, from, that's from that's that Bird yeah. Rock and La Jolla. Right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, he maybe looks so pretty yeah. good for the. Uh, ceremony. That's awfully nice album. Now, how do I get uh, about the hat? You yeah. say hat. Okay. Well, first of all, I have a hat for you. Hey, I and, appreciate and here, that. That is so nice. This is an official nice. Shotgun Tom Kelly uh -huh. hat, but not just a hat. Uh huh. There's more to it. We're gonna turn it around. Ah. And okay. And you have an official. Hollywood I Walk of Fame that. pin, lapel pin that I'm wearing here on my suit, and I want to, I want to present that. That is classic. Thank you so much. You yeah. know, I have, a, I have, a, I have some memorabilia I'm hanging on to, and this well, is right, go By right the way, the I understand Mike McKinnon. Uh, I, I brought this hat in what last week. I know. Mike McKenna said, "Hey, I got to have that hat." And he's got his officers. So he like got the, he got the first hat. <laughs> he I got your hat. But there they got. Hat. I replaced Good it. Deal. All right. Now you know variety. Good variety. Yeah. Well, variety does a uh, uh -huh. a thing. Uh, anybody who gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, gets a, a story in variety. Look at that. That and is this, so neat. This, this uh, yeah. here. There we go. Yeah. This came out. Uh -huh. And uh, the day I got the star, which was April thirtieth, uh, two thousand thirteen. And the the whole story is in there, but I mean, uh, it is wonderful uh -huh. uh, that what the Hollywood Walk of Fame committee does. And uh -huh. also, my friends wanted to get involved, so in the same variety, they uh, they pooled their funds and uh -huh. they bought this particular ad. That's neat that you see right. You gotta here. love there that. And their names are all around there. Congratulations, Shotgun Tom Kelly, on getting your star. On the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We got less than one minute left. Here, let, let me let me how give did, that to how you. Did, thank you. How did you get the name Shotgun? And 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 as we go out, I okay. want you to do some of your famous lines. Okay. How did you get the name Shotgun? I got the name Shotgun because I never liked to ride in the back seat. I always liked to ride <laughs> the front seat with my dad. He always called that Shotgun. <laughs> so, yeah, it. That's it. All right, give me your famous lines as we go All out. All right, you better believe it, baby. I hope you're staying out of <laughs> trouble in your automobile bubble and uh, you know stuff like that. You know, you've got some classics. Yeah, and then uh, hey, now listen here. We're, if you want to walk down that pathway of, you know, 
You know, just, uh, just fun stuff, you know. I love it. Hey, it's been great meeting Hey, thank you, Alan. Thanks thank you lot. very kind. Uh, it's been deal. really uh, fun to be back yeah. here on KUSI. Good deal. I'll be listening Monday. You better Monday. believe in baby. You yeah. better believe in Alan. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to wrap it up for this morning's edition of San Diego People. Be sure and join us for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11. Have a great day.